The much-anticipated Kogi state elections have come and gone, and the winners have been announced. However, two major election observer groups, the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room and YAGA, have called for the total cancellation of Saturday's governorship elections in Kogi state, naming electoral violence and results manipulations as the biggest reasons for this call. And I still have in the studio Babashala Adebui, political analyst, and Emeka Mwaduke. Um, he is a legal practitioner. I'll start with you, Babashala. Um, I listened to Dino Malai, um, and <laughs> he complained about helicopter. He said <laughs> he can be dramatic, but he talked about them adding a new dimension to the you know, rigging with helicopters hovering and um, tear gassing people and trying to get people away from. I found that really ludicrous. But also there was another candidate who complained about the fact that the elections were a sham. And these are observer groups also complaining about it. I didn't think that this would happen in Kogi. I was actually hoping and I was so certain that this would happen in Bielsa because we know that Bielsa is also a hotbed when it comes to uh, elections. From the outside in, what did you observe as per the election malpractices? First thing first, um, the Kogia election was totally below the Nigerian standard. How do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> because I think this is the first time I'll be hearing of seeing the helicopter Actually, because I saw the video and I saw the helicopter moving up there with tear gas up and down. I saw the video and a lot of people were shouting, oh, you can see them shooting tear gas at us, all this. So I, I saw it. That's number one. Number two, to the extent of policemen, okay, let me say men in uniform, going to the pulling unit, shooting people there, cutting away, the ballot buses. I saw that too. I'm talking of what I saw in the social media and even the paper. There were the conventional media too, like newspaper, also carried some of the news and even the pictures of some of them. So for me, it's totally below the standard of we have never had a very good standard. So for this election to be below the standard that we are known for, I think for me, I want to support what these guys are calling for. Um, that's on that. Then on the assessment, I will also want to be in support of their the total cancellation. Election did not hold in Kogi State, as far as I'm concerned. But they declared a winner. Well, it has always been. They must declare a winner. Election did not hold in Kogi State, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not talking of the general view, but for me, election did not, that was not election, that was a battleground. It was actually a battleground. A lot of people were killed. I even thought River State, <laughs> River State is the most senior, but I, the dimension of Kogi was totally beyond what I expected. By Esa State, I didn't expect much because we saw the body language of, like I said, most of the leaders of PDP where they were, so, uh, where they were. But the Kogi State, it must be the quoted, uh, what's it called? They apply the Bible quotation, everyone suffered violence. So it's only the violence that can take it by force. And we saw that on social media. But, but so what, okay. Um... This is, this is civil society, of course. They're supposed to have a certain uh, power to speak truth to power in situations like this. But then again, most times when civil society in Nigeria speaks, nobody listens to them. INEC also plays a part in, like I said, they have announced a winner amidst all of the pockets of violence. Is INEC not somewhat of a, an accomplice in how terrible our electioneering process has become? And I'm not solely placing this at the foot of INEC, but they are the umpire. Do they not play a role one way or the other in how bad and such a sham or how much of a sham that our electioneering process has become? Yeah, certainly. Because um, if we're using... Um the Kogi election as um, 
a, a yardstick. Um, obviously, uh, the, the election is, is a disgrace. If uh, given all that uh, we've read in the media and uh, all that, you know, because even um, before the election, you know, the, the handwriting was there. You don't even need to be a DSS person to know that the election will be marred by violence. In fact, I know of people who left town, who left Kogi. That was how bad it was because they, uh, on the eve of the election, because they felt, uh, they felt their lives were on the line. That was how bad it was. But every day, so Einek, Einek and, that's in, Einek Einek Einek, Einek and um, the this. NOA are asking people, in fact, civil society, we're preaching every day, the media, go out and vote. Your vote is your power. But then the, the conduciveness of the atmosphere is not there. If we see whether those men who were dressed in police uniform were real or fake, people were not safe. People allegedly were being tear gassed. Why would anybody want to go out in the future to queue up behind anybody and vote? Is this not one way or the other trying to destroy any iota of will to come out and vote or cast your vote in Nigeria? Definitely, definitely. Because, again, even the facts of uh, the helicopter is in the NBA, Nigerian Bar Association report, that a police helicopter was uh, dropping tear gas. So it's not even uh, hearsay. The Nigerian Bar Association verifies that. So that's, that's how bad it is. And um, it's, it's very widespread. Uh, there were, you know, there, there was intelli intelligence that, you know, the, 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 the state would basically arm, was basically arming uh, youth gangs and, um, you know, with guns and all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, materials to, to either prevent, because even before now, even during the previous election, that was what happened. I, I was told personally that, you know, if you're for a different party, they'll basically tell you to go back. If, uh, the, you know, even on the eve, there were shootings, there were, you know, and this was like broad daylight. So the state was basically uh, at war before and during the election. So, and this is uh, unacceptable. And uh, the fact that, you know, I need more or less endorse this by going ahead to announce the result. It's, it's a national tragedy. Talking about know. tragedy, we have a clip of how bad the situation was and some uh, people experienced the violence in Koki State. Let's take a look at it and then when we come back we'll talk more. Guys, who have come around to start our violence? Guys, this is what they do. These are people from the Ayabi. Can you see them? This feels like where we were in Sierra Leone when they were having the Diamonds War or... I mean, I'm just thinking, it, it looks like a genocide of sorts and that is supposed to be an election polling unit. They're normal human beings carrying guns and I asked the question while we were watching. These people that are contracted to carry guns and shoot at people at polling units. What if the same thing is happening to their family members as another polling unit? Do we really process these things before we decide to carry a gun uh, for whoever the pays? Well, um, you know, the other time I said it wasn't election, it was like a battleground. And now we can see this is just one. I've seen a lot of them. 
that are shooting up and down. Let me tell you, a terrorist doesn't care about his family. All he's taking off as at that time is all about himself. It's just like someone producing fake drugs. He has forgotten that one day his son or his daughter will fall ill where he is not with them and someone will send someone to go and buy drugs, unfortunately to be his own drug that will give to this daughter and son. So, but what they are after us at that time is how to make money from people. So same thing with talks. Talks have no reasoning of themselves, of, of, of what happens tomorrow. It is about now. We must do what we have been assigned to do. So sometimes they can, if they have that chance. At whose expense? To the detriment of who and what? Well, it doesn't concern talks. This is the guy, he has given us money, he has mobilized us, it's the money we are after. So the money is there, let's go and carry out his work. What I saw on that screen was a state that is not ready for democracy. I could see the roofs and the houses. It's an underdeveloped area. And with due respect to the people from Kogi State, if a person is willing to kill for a seat, is that really a leader? I said, what do you get? No, um, you know, uh, what, uh, what's his name? Um, Governor Ayabelo. Ayabelo is uh, rated as a spectacular failure in governance. Uh, uh, at any rate, people even suggest that he wasn't prepared for governance um, because recall that he even lost the primaries and uh, was just, uh, you know, went in by stroke of luck following the death of uh, this other gentleman, um, Audu. You know, so, and um, over time, he's not shown any capacity to govern. So, um, and virtually everyone you ask from Kogi will tell you that Governor Bello uh, is not delivering on anything as regards the democracy dividends. But he's been um, a lucky gentleman to maybe have uh, the right uh, connections and uh, to be given 10 billion by even our National Assembly on the eve of uh, this election. You know, um, then again, a lot of people, people have, also... There, there, there are a lot of question marks attached to that money that was released on the eve of the election. Yes, yes. I, I, was, I was coming to that because, of course, people suggest that it's for uh, ele election rigging and uh, bribery, vote buying and all that. But even aside from that, more, more, more painful is even the fact that people say that because the money was supposed to be for projects executed. And the indigenous say, we've not seen it, even uh, anywhere you've dropped uh, even a, 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 a barrel of sand, not to talk of uh, doing any project for this money that you were given. So that's how bad it is when uh, you reckon with this gentleman as regards governance. So for such a person to uh, then be backed you know, by the powers that be, you know, uh, at the federal level, and uh, to again then be rubber stamped by uh, INEC is uh, a tragedy of uh, massive proportions. So, uh, and we're quite sad. Finally, let, let, my last question to you, Babashala. Um, I'm trying to push this out this in the best of ways. I'm imagining, what do you think the world is saying? Because, of course, like I said, it's a global village that we live in now. Whatever is posted on social media can be seen anywhere in the world. And I'm sure that people tagged all kinds of people, the United Nations, the U.S. consulate, all sorts of people. And they're watching these videos, and they're looking at us and thinking all sorts of things. And we're supposed to be a giant, because we're no longer the giant, of Africa. A big country, we're supposed to be civilized, to be able to understand the difference between a democracy and whatever it is that we're doing right now. Do you think that we're losing gradually, or maybe we have lost our respect in the Committee of Nations and the Committee of States across the world? In, in the year 2015, I was not in the country when the presidential election was conducted. 
so I came back before the gubernatorial election. I was in one of the helpers out there, and uh, someone said, oh, you're from Nigeria? Oh, you guys had a wonderful election. That was a good election. That was a good election. We are proud of you guys. I doubt if the same will be said of Nigeria now. Because that time, the election went on peacefully. I would say it was peaceful. Um, but in this year, 2019, I can tell you it was not peaceful. And what the world will be saying now is they are not serious. They are not serious. They are not ready for democracy. Nigeria is not even ready to develop. You get so they cannot see us as a serious country. They cannot see us having a better future because everything we have been able to achieve since uh, since 2015 has always been too violent in respect of political appointment. You get so, and this we. In one way or the other, discourage a lot of potential investors who are to come into the country and invest because they are not sure of waking up tomorrow and still find out that their business, their business will still exist because of the violence. In the, just let me ask a question in Kogi State now: How many businessmen we think of going to Kogi State to start something? There is, there is a tendency for violence to continue even after today because the evidences are there. And high neck is not even helping matter. So no businessman would think of going to Kogi State. And unfortunately, in the last four years, I have not seen anything being achieved by this, this sitting governor to even encourage investors in that state. So, I'm not seeing anything good that the foreigners will talk about in respect of this election. But if it's about the human potential or what we have been able to achieve individually, I see that goal. But as a country, election period, forget it. Do we see this changing anytime soon? Anytime soon? Because he said. The buy used to be here, but it's dropped completely. The egg's been broken. There's nothing left because this has this is the lowest of lows. Yes, I think the the major worry is really uh, this INEC leadership, and we must place the blame squarely because at the very basic, this election, especially in Kogi, you know, has to be cancelled. But for INEC, under whatever guise and with all the evidence to proceed to announce this uh, result, uh, like I said, you know, keep this tragedy keeps coming. But this goes beyond and, Kogi um, State. Does this not go know, beyond Kogi this State? This INEC needs to be fixed. We don't have the requisite leadership currently in INEC to deliver. Is it just about this INEC or all of the INECs we've had from when we started what we call a democracy today. Anyway, we're going to deal with what we have presently. Obviously, we may have made progress, but if this is probably, of course, your best result is, uh, your latest result is the, 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 your rating, your, you know, the current rating. So if this is what we have now, this INEC is, uh, is uh, it has to has to be rejected entirely. Well, Some, something funny happened on Sunday. You know, initially Smatadi Ebi was uh, declared the winner. So later in the evening, we now got another one. Oh, it has been declared inconclusive. So that is a problem with INEC. <laughs> well, it's quite unfortunate, but I want to say thank you, Baba Shaladebui, political analyst, and Mekan Wadeke, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, you, we have to end on that sour note. But um, there's a lot to be said, and we will take a break. When we come back after our PLOS report, I will say that thing in my take. Stay with us. The Center for Ethical Conduct has called on Nigerians to imbibe ethical conduct and shun corruption in their dealings. The Center, at the 2019 Ethical Moral Summit in Abuja, stated that there is a need to reposition the nation, shun hate speech, and embrace good morals. We are trying to position our nation in the right frame from the believed order that they wish to have that uh, Nigerians are corrupt peoples. We are trying to sell to change the narratives from bad to better 
and from better to best. And that is the reason why we came up with trying to see how we can stray the the importance of ethical conduct as a nation. We are also in the same vein launching the Moras magazine. It's going to be the media reach out of the Center for Ethical Conduct Education and Empowerment. The purpose is to further help us in our crusade to reach out to more people that we cannot reach out to via the summit. The, 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 the piece of publication will be able to cut across all books down to local levels and everywhere by special grace of God Almighty. So the purpose is to those who cannot actually be in our program Programs who, can, who cannot capture, the magazine can actually reach out and communicate. In the course of the program, we try to argue or to tell the people that there is a need for ethical and moral leadership because we cannot separate that from power because that's what will actually guide our leaders. And as the election is going, we implore the people to be ethically governed, conduct governed and guided to pull themselves in peace and to actually work and vote and maintain peace and orderliness during the election. We should be able to encourage uh, freedom of speech. It's a fundamental human right. Hate speech is not good. It can condemn someone unjustly. It can destroy the nation. I think what we should do is orientation, to orient people about the consequences of hate speech. That's number one. Proposing a death penalty is not the answer. It's just a way of, you know, uh, making people not talking or saying what they feel. So I think instead of proposing a death penalty, what should be done is to ensure orientation. We discover that moral and ethical behavior is vastly disappearing in our society. And it is something that we need to move forward as a nation. So I want to say a big congratulations to them for putting this together. I personally, I want to thank my log for being uh, a participant in this kind of program because it's something that uh, is going to benefit me. I'm, the things that I've learned today, I'm taking it back to my organization. I'm a public servant, and I believe that if we can imbibe the practice of ethics and moral in our place of work, definitely Nigeria will be a changed country. Elections have become a time for bloodletting, for violence and disruptive behavior in Nigeria. What a shame. And with all the talk and advocacy against violence during elections, it seems nothing has really changed. Certain people have decided that this is the way to go, no matter what. So how do we change this? How do we fight it? Can we really ever stop it? Because it seems like it's become our normal behavior. Well, the answer lies with us. If we truly, are, really are ready and want to end this dangerous way of conducting elections, we can and we will. The solution, I believe, lies with us all. I am Mary Anacle, and it's been Plus Politics. <laughs>